And welcome to episode number four of this Toronto Maple Leafs NHL 22 playthrough. Tonight we're playing the New York Rangers. Or maybe it's morning by the time you watch this video. Um, the Leafs... Ah, uh, should we even talk about the Leafs? Because they're in a bit of a tailspin right now. They've lost three in a row. They lost this game to the Rangers. They lost the game to San Jose on Friday. And tonight, they lost 7-1 to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Fortunately for me, I didn't see either of the San Jose or the Pittsburgh Penguins game as we welcome you into Scotiabank Arena here. I wonder if uh, Martina Ortiz Luis is singing the anthem here on EA Sports. We don't really know because we don't get to see the anthems. But man, does Martina ever sing a good national anthem? She is definitely one of my favorites. We're back at this series trying to go for our second consecutive win. We beat Ottawa in the last episode. There's Marner right off the hop. We beat Ottawa in the last episode, and that was exciting. It was our first shutout of the year. Mrazek had that shutout, and so he's back in the net in this game. Richie can't get it out of the zone. And the Rangers are all over me here early. Matthews, Richie again with the second chance. He'll get it out this time. Here comes Marner into the zone. Marner, was that stopped there? I don't know. Is that Shesterkin in net? Because, man, was Shesterkin good in the game against the Leafs on Monday night. Capo Caco stopped there by TJ Brody. So, what do you guys think about the Toronto Maple Leafs season so far? It has been a struggle, to say the least. Not as bad as the Montreal Canadiens, and I keep reminding myself of that. But um, they definitely don't look like a playoff team, and that's concerning. And this team has been very concerning for a number of years now with their compete level. And it's just disappointing to see them again struggling at the start of a year you know you'll remember a couple years ago the Leafs started poorly and it cost Mike Babcock his job and Mike Babcock oh there we go Tavares in front of the net his first goal of the season a nice assist there from Nick Ritchie he can do it in the video game but he can't do it in real life that goal is eerily similar to one of the goals that I scored in the last episode right at the start of the period. It is Shesterkin in net there for the New York Rangers in this game. So yeah, you'll remember a few years ago the Toronto Maple Leafs got off to a really bad start. And they lost something like seven in a row at one point. And that cost Mike Babcock his job. And then the Leafs hired Sheldon Keefe and immediately went on a bit of a winning streak. And it seemed like... Well, hey, maybe the Leafs just weren't playing for Mike Babcock. Well, then, of course, the pandemic hit. And the NHL season took a halt. And so the Leafs may have made the playoffs that year. They may not have. They had begun to slide a little bit in the standings before the season was called. It was going to be a tight race. They were in a tight race with Florida for that third and final spot in the Atlantic Division. But nobody really knows. Florida was like hit and miss in that season. And so were the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it just seemed like neither of those teams really wanted to make it into the playoffs. And so when the season was called, of course, they both got a shot to do it in the bubble that was held in Toronto. And both teams actually ended up missing the playoffs. Um or getting eliminated in that bubble game. That was a bad pass right onto the net of, and stopped by Mrazek. Here's the best Toronto Maple Leafs so far in the year, Jason Spezza. So yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, and then last year, the Leafs were in the North Division, clearly the best team in that division, but it was definitely the worst division in the NHL. The only other real good team in that division was the Edmonton Oilers, who are off to a 5-0 start. And we can talk about them a little bit later. But, um, yeah, Montreal was in that division, obviously, and they did go to the Stanley Cup Finals, but I think you could probably say that they definitely weren't the best team and probably didn't even deserve to make the playoffs if it were a regular NHL season. Michael Bunting's back in the lineup here, too, by the way, in this game. He was injured in our first game, 
of the season. And uh, Kerfoot is out in this one, and he's got a concussion in this uh, fictitious season of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So yeah, the Toronto Maple Leafs were definitely um, the best team in the division last year, but did they deserve to win the division? Probably not. Like, if you compare it to the rest of the league and how good they've been, and they'll be in a fight to the death this year in the Atlantic division because there's uh, Tampa Bay, obviously. We're going to go to the power play here. Interference penalty be called. There's Tampa Bay, there's Florida, good team. Boston Bruins never go away. Um, Montreal's obviously off to the rough start, but Ottawa's been decent so far. Um, Buffalo's been good. I obviously don't expect Buffalo to be good long term. But I think it's fair to say that the, the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, given their start, are probably looking at a wild card spot. And I know that's... That's, um, that's pretty... I don't need. I don't. I don't know what the right word is. Rude to say. So early on in the season. But it's true. They just haven't 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 looked like a good playoff team. And and one of those reasons is because of Mitch Marner, and Austin Matthews. Now Austin Matthews, I'll give a little bit of a break to because he is coming off. Oh, there was that centering feed there. He is coming off that wrist injury that cost him the, to to miss the first few three games of the season and uh so i'll give him a little bit of a break he's a little bit behind everybody else but um i don't know i don't know about mitch marner i don't know what's what, what's gotten on with him the last little bit obviously the fans are calling for him and the media is on him as well nick ritchie uh was benched in the san jose sharks game and he's on that line with matthews and marner but Sheldon Keefe said after the game that it was more to do with the play of Marner and Matthews and trying to, to find somebody to get them going. And that is a little bit concerning because obviously the Leafs lost the guy that got them going in free agency, Zach Hyman. He went to the Edmonton Oilers and he's been absolutely tearing it up with the Oilers. He has more goals than Matthews, Nylander, Marner combined, Tavares, you can throw Tavares into that mix there too, because he's got five goals, he scored two again last night, and he's got five goals playing on the line with McDavid and Edmonton, here's Bunting, uh, Morgan Riley with a blast, so obviously that was a player and is going to continue to be a player that the Toronto Maple Leafs miss desperately. Are we calling a penalty there? Oh my goodness. What are we calling it for? Wayne Simmons, the pride of Scarborough. He uh, had a fight in the last game. I didn't see that penalty. I don't know if I don't know if I uh, if I took that penalty or if that was a computer penalty. Well, let's just call it an even up penalty. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't seen the last couple of games, which is a rarity for me, but it's just one of those things where I've been out and about doing things in my life, and I haven't uh, haven't had the chance to watch the games as detailed as I would. And nice save there by Morazic. We're going to get that puck out. And here's Marner. Oh, I thought I, I, thought I was going to... He's going to have a chance. I thought he was going to have a chance there, and we're just going to... Uh, uh, I tried to go back to the point there, but... Um, Uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh, man, that was bad. That was so bad. I could have been costly. But it's okay. We got it. We got this under control. We got this under control. Strom in front of the net. Dermot. Get it out. It's the man again, Lafreniere, to Truba. Picked off there by Hall just for a second. Strom gets hammered along the boards. It's a scrum along the net. There's a delayed penalty called because I absolutely destroyed Strom there in the corner. Hit a couple slashes. Justin Hall is all over it here. And the New York Rangers will have a 
two second five on three. Justin Hall going to the penalty box. Yeah, he offers Wayne Simmons a drink of Gatorade there. Simmons is like, nah, man, I'm good. I already got my, when I got into the box there, didn't you see? And Justin Hall's like, of course I didn't see. I was killing the penalty. And we win the face off there. Pierre Engvall mustn't whiffs on the clearing attempt though. And now the Rangers have control of the puck. We've killed off all penalties so far. That was off the post. Rings off the iron and they score. I don't even know who that is. Chitlick? Is that is that how you say that name? Nope. I don't think so. Philip Schlick? No idea. You guys let me know in comments how you pronounce that guy's name. I don't even know who he is. Sorry. So unfortunately, they scored on the 5-on-3. The first power play goal we allowed against this year. So they still have a minute 37 left of power play time. Here comes Nylander. Nylander in. Oh man, that was bad. Mikheyev. Mikheyev. Back to nobody. And it's going to scoot down the ice here. Morgan Riley takes the long way around, but it's all right. And as Mikheyev clears the puck down the ice. In terms of other stories in the NHL, I haven't really been paying much attention i saw the montreal canadians finally got their first win this evening against the detroit red wings i'll actually be at the detroit red wing toronto maple leaf game next saturday night on hockey night in canada uh, so hopefully the leafs have their uh stuff figured out for that game because i do not want to go watch a 7-1 embarrassment after paying 200 dollars for a ticket to sit in the 300 level. Oh man. Oh man. Shouldn't have moved that puck. But I get it out of the zone. And Brody's good. just going to flip it on net there. But yes. It should be a good game. It's always fun. It's been forever since I've gone to a Toronto Maple Leafs hockey game. The last time I went to a Toronto Maple Leafs hockey game was in January before the pandemic. And they played the Chicago Blackhawks. And I think they lost 6-2, if I remember correctly. So I've seen my fair share of poor Toronto Maple Leafs games over the years. The worst Toronto Maple Leafs defeat that I've ever seen in person was an 8-0 shellacking. Uh, it was, I was probably in the mid to late 2000s. That looked offside, and it was. The mid to late 2000s. Um... I saw that game in Ottawa, and Ottawa was very good at the time, as they were. Jason Spezza was a member of that hockey club, and they defeated the Leafs that night by a score of 8 to nothing. And I remember it specifically because of the two hammered guys right in front of us. And they were just having the time of their lives. But I think, I think if I remember correctly, one of them spilt a beer on my sister, who was probably like, I don't know, I don't know, like eight years old at the time. So that's kind of funny in hindsight. But at the time, it probably wasn't too funny as Engvall has got the backhand there and it's stopped again by Shesterkin with 2.8 seconds left in the first. It probably was not that funny at the time. But looking back at it, it was really funny. That's also when I gained great disdain for the Ottawa Senators' goal horn. I love trains. Don't get me wrong. But their Via Train goal horn is obnoxious. And I will still argue that to this day. I don't even know if it's if it's sponsored by Via Train anymore. But it was at one point. Look at all the people in that crowd taking their drinks simultaneously. That must be some sort of record. Yeah, but uh, let me know. Let, let me know in comments what is the most annoying goal horn that you have ever heard. Um, Montreal's is pretty obnoxious as well, but I've gained some appreciation of it over the years. Edmonton's is atrocious if you're a visitor. Um, I don't know. There's some really good ones. I love the Anaheim Ducks one. I used to love pranking people when I was a kid. 
on MSN Messenger. That's dating me a bit, but uh, on MSN Messenger, I used to send people links. And I, the thing to do at the time was rickroll people. Mitch Marner, stop by Shesterkin. Is it over for the net? No, Shesterkin holds on there just like in real life. He's going to shut the door on the Toronto Maple Leafs offense there. So at the time, it was really popular to rickroll people. And I got rickrolled all the time. And I was not a fan of it. And rickrolling, for those of you who don't know, and uh, if you're on the internet, you should know, like, was people used to send this video of Rick Astley, Never Give You Up. Um, and it used to be so annoying because you, could, you couldn't actually close the link. It just keep playing this stupid thing and you have to like control alt delete close your browser and stuff like that to close this link because every time you went to click it'd be like are you sure you want to leave are you sure you want to leave and it, or however you know so it was really obnoxious and i got rickrolled all the time and i was just i was so annoyed with it so as payback i used to send people links of NHL goal horns hoping that they would click on the link oh what a hit there by Justin Hall and we're gonna have a fight it looked like yeah Lafreniere there that Hall got and it looked like he was hurt on that play Justin Hall is having a fight here with Lindgren and Lindgren is going to see the worst of it. And he's going to go almost head first into the boards there. But Hall, Hall holds him. Hall holds him. He's like, hey, man. Like, it, it wasn't that bad of a hit. He, he, he Now he's pumping up the crowd. And the crowd salutes him back. Five minutes for fighting for Justin Hall. I don't think there was a penalty on that play. I think it was a pretty clean hit. But Lindgren felt like he had to stick up for his teammate there. Anyway, so getting back to my long story. Oh, that's an icing call. I used to send people goal horns as revenge for them sending me the Rick Astley video. And hopeful, hopefully that they were wearing hair, headphones and they wouldn't know it at the time. And they'd have their headphones on full blast and it would just be like, bah! that used to be my prank as a kid to get back at people who Rick ruled me. Um, wouldn't work really now because when you send people links now it obviously generates that preview image uh, back in the day that was not a thing believe it or not so and that's offside i'm just gonna fire that onto the net oh looks like uh looks like things are gonna get a little feisty here simmons is gonna is gonna jump in simmons had a fight in the last game kasha had a little oh man oh man simmons just takes down hunt there Oh, Simmons had a fight in the last game. The crowd is pumped. They're on their feet. Two fighting majors back to back. I forget what I what 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 part of the story I was at, or if the story was done. But yeah, the long story short, short. Just uh, let me know. What do you think is the most annoying? goal horn what do you think is the best goal horn in the nhl um and while we're on that topic we might as well talk about oh bouncing puck there in front of mrazic and he's gonna make two stops there to keep this game knotted at once while we're on it let me know uh what the best goal song is in the nhl i absolutely adore the toronto maple leafs goal song right now you make my dreams and i know a ton of people hate it and it, if people ask all the time who actually likes this song who wants this to be our goal song it's so weird it makes no sense you know what that person is me and if i were the toronto maple leafs i would absolutely keep it forever and ever and ever obviously that's not going to happen but at the start of the ev every year i get nervous that you make my dreams is not going to be the goal song anymore just like I get nervous that Martina Ortiz Louise might not sing the anthem for the Leafs one day. There's a nice passing play by the Rangers, but maybe one too many passes. 
as I can't get the puck out of the zone here. Turnover after turnover. Strowman. Oh, sand it. I think Martino Ortiz Luis sings the best anthem in the National Hockey League. And uh, I hope she's the Leafs anthem singer forever. Like, she's young enough where she can do it for 50 years, and I would not complain. But we'll have to see. She's done a lot of acting jobs recently, so maybe she'll get into that a little bit more professionally. I believe she was on Wyona Earp um, for a bit there, and I think on Twitter the other day she says she's working on a couple of new TV shows as well, so good for her. Excited to see what she's got coming. But uh, we'll miss her if she ever leaves as the Toronto Maple Leafs anthem singer. Nick Ritchie. I'm going to go around the net here. Hope that Marner can get to that puck. Marner around the net. Marner to Riley. Delayed penalty coming to the Rangers. TJ Brody. Mitch Marner. Shot blocked. I still control the puck. Marner. A, a little bit of an extended power play here. The goaltender is out. We're going to go back to Brody. Brody's going to fire it onto the net. And that one's blocked. Richie. Back to Riley. And I just let that go. All right, we're going back to the power play here. Holding call to Adam Fox. Apparently, I got a bit of an itch here on 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 my uh, whatever you want to call that belly, just above the belly. So if you see me itching there a lot in this episode, which you probably have, or maybe not, if the camera's cut off, that that's what's happening. I just I'm very itchy for some reason. The Rangers win the faceoff there and will clear the puck in the zone. Jason Spetz is going to spring Bunting. I at least I tried to, but it goes through Simmons. Simmons back to Bunting. Shot right on. Simmons. We want him as that net front presence. So he's going to drop it off to Spetz. He doesn't go to the net. Instead, it's Nick Ritchie in front of the net, and that puck goes. Maybe that was stopped by Schuster. Consider Spetz again. Just blasting that puck here. Okay, we're gonna bring out PP1 here because we need uh we need the power we need the PP going. Matthews, Nylander, Tavares. Just focusing there. Lost the face off again. Pushing the puck towards the net. Just all over Jacob Truba there. But he will get the puck out and down the ice. Morgan Riley. Maybe not soon to be on the first power play unit, considering the Toronto Maple Leafs power play struggles to start the season yet again. Maybe Sandin will be in. Maybe he already has been. I don't I don't know. I haven't watched the last couple of games, as I mentioned earlier. There is going to be... I thought that was going to be an icing on the power play, but it's not. Matthews finds the puck to Nylander. And he shoots that puck high over the net. It looked like Matthews or Nylander may have held on to a New York Rangers player there. It doesn't look like there's a delay penalty, so... We're going to just skate with the puck, and Mar Marner skates right into Tavares. Tavares threw into the zone. He's got Matthews going to the net, but he's challenged there by the Rangers defender who gets the puck and will clear the puck down the ice. The power play for the Toronto Maple Leafs was so strong for us in the first game of this series, but ever since has struggled to regain any momentum. It's been a lot of one and dones. There's Nylander. Nylander with a shot stopped by Shesterkin. Mitch Marner. Looking. Looking. Can't find anybody. There's nobody in front and nobody's moving to the net. So I'm just going to go down here and try to feed it down in for Matthews. Matthews is all over it. Still nobody in front of the net. Still not a lot of movement. Truba's got the puck. The power play is over, and that was just disastrous. Fox is out of the box here. If it was Fox in the box to begin with, that's a rhyme. I don't remember what who was in the box, and I'm just trying to score here. But we got a 1-1 game here with two minutes left. Matthews is going to the net. There's Simmons with the blast, and that partially blocked there. And Nemeth will get the puck, and he will skate it. Simmons again all over the puck. This is why I gave Simmons more ice time in this game with Kerfoot out of the lineup. He's all over it. The pride of Scarborough, just like in episode number three. Just dominated this game. 
We need more from Matthews, just like in real life. Here comes Zabinijad through the zone. That puck's taken away by Spezza. He's done enough in real life, but has he done enough in the video game? We're not sure. Spezza's going to go to the net here. Spezza! Missed opportunity there by Simmons on the rebound. Here's Nemeth again at the line. He's held up. We're going to go back to Matthews. Matthews, get around him. Get around him. Get around him. Just back it all hand on the net. Back hand on the net. In front to Richie. Stop by Shesterkin. And the Rangers cleared the zone again. There's Chitlick, or however you say his name. But that is the end of the period. We won one here, headed to the final frame. Shots are 37 16. But the score is tied. Who is going to win this game? Matthews wins the faceoff back. Matthews right in through the zone. We're going to go with the quick wrister. I don't know if that hit the post or if that was just over the net. Again, not playing with sound on my headphones for some reason because I've just decided that's what I'm going to do apparently. And... Just a whole mess of bodies there at the blue line. Marner is going to feed it back to Matthews here. Matthews in front to Richie, and that goes through the crease. Richie couldn't get a stick on it there. Zabinajad looking, skating back and forth. Just shadowed there by Richie. Back and forth, back and forth. EA Sports, you move the players left to right, but they don't move forward. Matthews intercepts that puck, and he's going to spring Marner. I thought he was going to get through the defenseman there, but that's shut down by Fox. Richie. Back to TJ Brody. I'm going to dump, try and dump it in, but it goes in off a of body. Where's Marner? Right in front of the net. It's a weak shot off of Shesterkin. And the Rangers will turn back the other way. There's Zabinajad. Zabinajad gets by Riley with a little bit of a stutter step. And it's a bit big turnover there as he tries to spring Bunting Fox into the zone. Shut down there by Brody. TJ Brody, the Leafs' best defenseman. There I said it. Through the first few games this year. Bunting scores! Michael Bunting, his first goal in this series. He's been good in real life. Back in the lineup after suffering that injury in the first game to Ottawa. Just holds on to the puck. Look at that traffic in net. Shesterkin's down early. Can't see the puck. And Bunting scores. 2-1 lead. 15.32 left in the third period. Tavares wins the draw. Tavares is going to go straight up the middle here. Tavares, Tamazin, to the Nylander in front. One shot, two shot, three shots. No. Can't get it in. And the New York Rangers will clear the puck out of the zone. And get it deep for Justin Hall. Justin Hall will go around to Bunting, the goal scorer here in the third period. Michael Bunting, can he get around to the defense? No, he can't. But he's going to stop up, and he's going to get it in deep. At least he's going to try. And he's working. He's working. He's working true back. Trying to get that puck. But he cannot do it. And now the Rangers are on a break. Justin Hall tries to take him out with the dive. But there is Hunt with his second goal of the season for the Rangers. And just like that, we're back to a tie game. It's 2-2. That's the bad defensive play that I'm talking about right there. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if that was a result of my actions or not. I'd have to go back and watch the replay, but I don't want to watch the replay of a bad penalty or a bad goal. And now we've got a penalty coming here to Chris Kreider. That's going to send us back to the power play. We have yet to score on the power play in our two opportunities so far in this game. But that can all change here. Bunting loses the faceoff. Almost a delay of game penalty there from the Rangers. And Munson's just going to backhand it in deep. And we're going to chip and chase. Chip and chase. Another close call there for the Rangers. Almost another delay of game penalty. And Muzzin gets the puck. Muzzin up to Richie. And Richie's going to bring the puck into the zone and pull back to Muzzin at the point. But he can't hold the point. And he's going to wait for his line mates to get onside. Muzzin going to set up right at the bottom of the circle. Slap shot scores. Jake Muzzin on the power play. Beats Shesterkin. Clean. 
Nobody in front. Just blasts it from the point. There's a power play goal, and that's what we're talking about. What a blast there from Jake Muzzin from the top of the circle. It's 3-2, just like that. Bang, bang, bang. Three quick goals. 12-22 left in the third period. Can I hold on this time? Tavares with the face-off win, and Muzzin's just going to get it in deep. It's time to play some solid defensive hockey. Muzzin from the point again. But that shot is blocked this time. There is a traffic in front of the net. Tavares is getting hounded there at the line. But he gets the puck eventually. And Tavares will come back to Nylander. I, at least it was supposed to be for Nylander. But it went to Bunting and said he gets a couple shots at the puck there. But he can't get it past Shisterkin who's been solid in this game. Keeping the Rangers in it for sure. Here's Truba through the zone. Battled off the puck by Muzzin. Muzzin, I tried to spring him. Which would have been weird, but uh, Kampf is going to put the puck deep and he's going to ice it with 10-12 remaining here in the third period. Passing effectiveness has gone up throughout the course of this game. It was in the low 60s at the start. Still not a great passer. As you could probably see, as I tried to pass the puck out of the zone there, but the Rangers hold the puck in the zone. There's a couple chances there. And uh, we're just going to get it out here very briefly. Nylander with a turnover at the red line. But uh, the Rangers turn it back over. And I turn it right back over to them. This period is filled with turnovers. And this is a sloppy game that virtual head coach Sheldon Keefe will not like one bit. But we got the lead so far. Morazic probably had a chance to hold on to that puck there. Doesn't do it. But he gets it up to Kampf. who's just going to get it and chip it in deep here. For William Nylander to race onto the puck. But the Rangers have it. And it's back the other way. The Rangers will take a turn and dump the puck into the zone. And here's Jake Muzzin, the goal scorer, former Sault Ste. Marie Greyhound, I believe. As I try to do my best Chris Cut for impression. Kampf out in front to Bunting looking for his second of the game. He cannot get it. Kampf again. Shisterkin makes the save. Man, Kampf. Or sorry, I think that was Bunting that, that time. Um... But Bunting's been good in this game, just like Shisterkin. And here comes Muzzin. I'm just going to try and wrist it on this time. Nylander with a chance. Tried to go for the tip, but it did not work. Justin Hall over to Muzzin. Over to Nylander. And Nylander's going to rip it onto the net. That's turned aside. Bunting again to Nylander. Backhand shot doesn't work. And the Rangers will clear the puck down in the zone with five minutes to go. Justin Hall racing onto the puck. The Rangers will probably look to pull their goaltender here soon. There's Kampf up to Nylander. Nylander tries to get too fancy going one on four there. That's okay. You just got to play some solid defensive hockey there as Matthews takes the puck off of Hunt's stick. Matthews through the zone. Matthews stops up. Matthews holding, waiting, scores. Austin Matthews absolutely rips it. Does the Patrick Kane Selly? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm Austin Matthews. Um, now, hopefully, unlike in that game in Chicago a few years ago, Austin Matthews' goal actually holds up as the game winner or as a winning goal. Then the Leafs do not blow it because I believe. The Leafs might have lost that game. Maybe they won at 7-6. I can't remember. I think they actually might have won at 7-6 now that I think about it. But that, that was in overtime. That was a crazy game. Um, Strom gets the goal there for the Rangers. And we're back to within one. This has been a wild third period. Just wait until you see what happens next. Two minutes and 38 seconds. Lots to happen here. The Rangers are probably going to pull their goalie. Austin Matthews' goal stands to be the game winner right now. But here come the Rangers and Panarin. Panarin's been pretty silent in this game. Nice play by Sand in there. Deflects the puck. He's kind of mad. He can't decide whether or not he's going to let go of a stick. It did break on the play. A minute 58 left. Just get it out of the zone. Just get it out of the zone. Can't do it. Can't do it again. 
Rangers are coming close here. Oh, I almost took a tripping penalty there. But it's a bit of Chad. Stopped by Mrazek. 106 to go. In real life, this is where the New York Rangers would call a timeout. But in NHL 22 or NHL video games in general, they don't do that. Is there six guys on the ice here yet here for the Rangers? Doesn't look like it. In real life, that would not be the case either. Morgan Riley's going to win this one. And we're just going to chip it up to Marner here. Marner. A little far shot there. We're in the last minute of the play now. And here comes the New York Rangers. They're pulling their goalie. Panarin through the zone. Busting through. But he can't get through all the way. There's Matthews being hounded. Here's Marner. He shoots. He scores. Marner's first goal of the year. It's an empty netter. But that gives us the 5-3 lead. And that should be enough. Fingers crossed. 35 seconds left. Stranger things have happened. Comp wins the face up here. Brody gets his shot blocked. But we're down to the last 30 seconds. Simmons at the point. We're just going to hold it back here. Just try and kill as much time as possible. The Rangers are pulling their goalie now even though they still have, haven't left the zone. They quickly put their goalie back in. They're like, Shesterkin, what are you doing? Stay in the net. And... Um, I clear the puck, or they, the Rangers clear the puck long enough for them to get Shesterkin out of the net, but that's all the time that they're going to have as this game is over. The Toronto Maple Leafs have won this game by a score of 5-3. to three. Not as solid of a defensive performance as the last game, but still a pretty good performance overall. Mrazic gets the win. Maybe we'll go to Campbell again in the next game. We're going to salute the crowd one more time. That's three wins for us in this playthrough series with one overtime. Or it was a shootout loss, actually. So better than the Leafs in real life so far. Uh, who knows how long that will continue, though. So if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you really like it. And you know what? I will see you in episode number five.